Hi, the second problem I assigned was page 236. So make sure when you hand in this paper, you have your name, the date, the period. Perfect, okay, so on page 236, you can kind of look through this section. I'm not gonna give you the answers for these, but I am gonna show you and reveal the answer for this question. So let's just center in here. I added find the perimeter and the area of this triangle. So step one, let's plot it. Negative seven and a half, two. Ooh, I see how they're making this a little bit harder. So I plotted that point. Negative five and a half, and then 13. Uh-oh, I already figured out a problem. The y-axis, they skip by twos. You see that? The x-axis, they're going by one. So I gotta be really careful by one. I gotta redraw a. So it went negative seven and a half, but then only two. Okay, what I drew looks like it went up four. So, whoop, let's get rid of that. Actually, I'm going to get my eraser. And that's why I always say if you're plotting points or doing your homework, definitely do it in pencil at first. Okay, so I fixed A. Okay, now let's do B. So I double checked A, negative seven, two. Now let's do B, negative five and a half and 13. Oh boy, okay. That's B. Then I have two and a half, two. Two and a half, two. Ooh. Okay. So when I look at this, I might even suggest, since they're trying to make it trickier with their graph paper, you might graph this on another piece of paper. Because I can't get in my car and drive. I'm gonna have to keep track. I'm driving two blocks when I go north and south, but only one block when I go east and west. So let's grab another piece of paper and just redraw this. Now we know that the shape is gonna look similar, but I actually think this will make it easier. So if you have graph paper at home, great. If you don't, not a big deal. I'm gonna redraw these points. And I know I'm gonna be in this quadrant, so. And I know I'm gonna go all the way up to 13. So I need some room. Okay, so now I drew a quadrant on a spare piece of paper. And I need to do negative seven, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and a half. And then up two, okay, and that's A. Negative seven and a half, two. Okay, that's a little bit more precise. Now on my graph paper, each block is just worth one. Now for B, it says negative five, so one, two, three, four, five and a half. So I wanna go to there. And then up 13, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Okay, so that's 13. B. Okay, then I have positive 2 and a half. Okay, so positive 2 and a half, and then positive 2. Now this is looking pretty good because to find the area, I simply want the base times the altitude. So we're dropping an egg from B, boo, bam. Okay, that's the, per that's the altitude. And I can actually bunny hop just to count these. So let's see, um, I went, that's a half, right? This was two and a half, I went over, two and a half, I went over, 
And this I went over seven and a half. Okay, so it looks like the distance here would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I could also think of it as adding these two together. So seven and a half plus two and a half makes 10. Another way is just to count the full blocks, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then a half a block and another half a block makes 10. So I definitely see this is 10. Now let's count straight up. I go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. Perfect. So, the area of a triangle is base times altitude divided by 2. So, the area of the triangle is 10 times 11 divided by 2. So, that would be 110 divided by 2 or 55. Okay. And it didn't, I'm just going to call that inches squared because they didn't mention any di um, location. Now, we can use the distance formula from last chapter. Lots of people don't like it but you totally can. Notice the distance between negative 7.5 and 2.5 on a number line is 10, and the distance between two and two is zero. So if I use the distance formula, the x values would be two and a half minus a negative seven and a half squared right and the y values would be 2 and 2 so 2 minus 2 so I end up getting 100 plus 0 squared which is just plain old 100 and remember my distance formula I have to take the square root of my final answer so I get 10 so you could use the distance formula here to find 10, or you could graph it and count the blocks, or you could use the number line. All of these help you find 10. Also notice in B, this coordinate was negative 5 and a half, 13. Notice the distance between the y values. This is all the way up here at 3, and this is down here at 2. So 13 minus 2 is 11. That There's a reason why that ended up being 11, because the Orange line's down here at 2, and the point B is up here at 13, and 13 minus 2 is 11. Now let's find the perimeter. So we found the area, and we made sure we understood that that was 10 using a couple different methods. Any of those methods are okay. Now I'm going to find the perimeter. So that's this length, and this length, and this length. So the perimeter of any shape that has three sides is just adding up all three of those numbers. We know one of the numbers is 10. Now we gotta get in our car and drive. So that can be a little tricky when we deal with halves, but I'm gonna try anyway. I'm getting my car and drive one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. Then I turn right and I drive one, two, and a half. Okay, so this distance right here would be the square root of 11 squared plus two and a half squared. Oh boy. Now this one, I'm gonna get in my trot. This should still be 11, right? And then I drive one half, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and another half. So that would be a total of eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then that would make eight. Oh, wait, this one was already in the halfway point, so that's just interesting. This would just be two. Okay, so I actually made a mistake here. I gotta, and that's why I told you, it's hard to drive in a car with halves. Notice, I didn't notice that I was already at the halfway box, 
So if I'm at a half, I have one half plus a whole box plus another half. That would should just be two. Okay. Now here we go. We have eight boxes. So this is eight. Definitely that's two. So that makes ten. That's how I knew something went wrong because I knew this whole thing was ten. So now I can find the length of this line. I know it's the square root of. I drew drove eleven and I drove eight. Okay. So now to find the perimeter, I just need to clean these up. So that'd be 121 and 64. So this one's the square root of 185. And this one would be 121 plus 4. So the square root of 125. So a lot of folks might think, okay, I think that's actually a number, not a decimal. Square root of, num nope, it's definitely a decimal. So these are decimals. This is my final answer in inches. Thank you for joining us.